Hey everyone, Dominic here from Loon Outdoors, and today I'm going to show you how to tie a weedless damselfly nymph. Alright, so for the hook, I'm using a size 10 nymph hook with a down eye. Um, this can be changed out for whatever size uh, you need to match your local damselfly hatch. And we're gonna get the thread started. I am using uh, just some ADOT Uni thread in olive. I believe this is olive done, but any olive thread should work. Let's go ahead and work the thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. And we are going to take a piece of uh, just olive marabou. I think this is, you know, woolly bugger marabou in sculpt and olive. But any olive marabou should work. And we're going to use this for our tail. Um, and I like my tail to be about twice the length of the hook gap. Let's go ahead and tie that in. Trim the excess. Clean it up. And with your thread at the base of the tail, we're going to tie in some copper wire. Um, this is in the brassy size. I found to be a good fit. But any copper wire should do. So we're going to tie that in, and that's going to be used to rib our body. Get that in nice and secure, and work your thread back to the base of the tail. And for our body, we're gonna use some olive dubbing. Um, I am using some squirrel hair dubbing in olive, uh, but again, any olive dubbing should work nicely. So go ahead and get that nice and even on your thread. And for the body, we're not looking for any kind of a taper, uh, just a straight dubbing body. And we're gonna work our way up to about the two, uh, two thirds of the way up the hook shank. Trying to keep it nice and even. Right to about there. And from there, we're gonna take our copper wire and give a nice segmented body. So go ahead and work that up to your thread, tie it off. Now for our wing case and wings, we're gonna use a, a lemon, lemon wood duck fiber, excuse me, a lemon wood duck feather. And you wanna take a nice healthy chunk of this because this is not only gonna act as our wing case but also both of our wings if we get it in there right. So go ahead and lay that on top of the hook shank upside down. In other words, with the kind of the more pale side of the feather right side up. And then we're going to take another piece of the, or another bit of the squirrel hair dubbing. And we're going to make a little dubbing ball to act as our kind of our thorax there. So just make that slightly bigger than the tape than the uh, the body of the fly. 
and work your thread in front of that. Now we're going to take that wood duck feather, lay it over the top of that dubbing ball. That's going to act as our wing case. Then take the wood duck and split it into two equal wings. Kind of separate those, have them pointing back towards the tail of the fly. This part's a bit tricky because you want to get them secure in there without breaking off the individual fibers. Right, like so. And we are actually going to cut those You can actually cut them evenly. So you've just got these short, kind of blunt wings. Turn that so you can see that there. And this is where things get interesting. We are going to take a piece of 20 pound Maxima Ultra Green, and you can use any kind of probably 15 or 20 pound mono for this. Uh, just a little piece. I'm um, going to go ahead and bend it in half just to get it prepped. Or fold it in half. And then we are going to tie that on the bottom side of the fly. And it'll take a bit of finessing to get it exactly where you want it. And essentially this is going to act as a weed guard. Similar to what you'd see on, you know, like a bass fly or any kind of a weedless fly. So you essentially want two pieces of 20 pound mono extending under the body and kind of coming right over the top of the hook gap. Make sure they're not getting tangled up in your wings. Now these are not going to be entirely weedless, but they will certainly keep enough of the weeds off to warrant tying them on there. I'm just trying to get my wings separated from those two mono pieces of mono that are extending down below. Just go ahead and get those untangled. You'll have to kind of finesse this mono to get it exactly where you'd like it. So if you see there, we've got two pieces of mono on the bottom end of the fly extending over the gap of the hook. That's gonna keep a fair bit of weeds off of that hook gap. So next we are going to take some UV fly finish in clear. I like the thin, uh, but thick will probably work just the same. Just give a bit of a shell back on top of that wing case. And go ahead and bake that in. And next we're going to finish off the head with a bit more of the olive dubbing. Not too much, just enough to kind of finish the head off and round this fly out. So give it a nice solid head. And then go ahead and whip finish that off. Just 
try that again. Now to finish this fly off, I like to take some of our UV fly finish in black and give it a couple of eyes. And I'm not entirely sure how much this helps in enticing a fish, but I think it makes the fly look a lot better. And when those fish are super picky and dialed into those damsels, every little bit helps. So to accomplish this, you gotta do it kind of in one, one solid motion. Um, you just want to get just one little kind of dot of black on each side and go ahead and turn your UV light on and have it ready. Give it one clean eye and then go ahead and bake that in before it has a chance to kind of lose its shape and run all over the place. Um, if you mess this step up, you can just bake it in with the UV light, and once it's kind of hard, um, you'll be able to just peel it off the side of there with a little bit of work, and you can give it another shot. And then we're going to come on the other side and do the same thing. Give it a second eye there, and you'll see what I mean about needing to get it kind of in one fell swoop with that UV. Um, if it takes too long to get out of the out of the applicator, it's just going to kind of you know run into the fly and not really give you that solid round eye shape that you're looking for. Let's go ahead and bake that in. And those, you know, I like to give a little bit of extra time under the UV light just ensure that they're in there nice and tight. From there, we're gonna go ahead and clean the fly off, trim any of the excess fibers that shouldn't be there. Make sure that our mono legs are kind of bended exactly to the position that we'd like them to be. And there you have it. That's a weedless damselfly nymph um, if you find fish that are rising to damselfly adults, go ahead and cast this right in that boil. Give it a nice slow strip, just enough to stay in contact with the fly line and the fly. And uh, they typically jump all over it. Um, a lot of these damselfly hatches, you know, occur right on the edges or you know, right in right in amongst the weed beds. So having that little bit of mono there will uh, keep you from pulling weeds off your fly all day and get you in a few more fish. Mm -hmm.